The video on gears consists of four parts. We start here with part one, introduction. In the beginning there was wheel. Okay, after light and fire first. The first wheels were not used for transportation. Evidence indicates that the wheel with its axle was created to serve as potter's wheels around 3500 BC or even 4500 BC from two different sources in Mesopotamia. Wheels for transportation and war via chariots became a dominating feature of civilization. Here is a wooden wheel and axle, and here is a bit of its evolution. When notches are put into a wheel, we get a gear. The first gear, designed to calculate astronomical positions, was made between 150 and 100 BC. Different types of gears were invented along the way up to 1720. Here are wooden gears, a simple gear, also called a spur gear, and a combination of different types of gears. Gears are essentially wheels with teeth on their rims. They are used to transmit force and motion, as we'll see. Let's start by noting how two gears can mesh like this. When one of them turns, the other turns in the opposite direction. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Meshed gears are called gear trains. A gear train consists of two or more meshed gears. When we say a car is in gear, it means the gears are meshed. Simple gears like this are also called spur gears as mentioned earlier. Let's now look at how gears can be compared. The simplest and most common way is to count the number of teeth like this. A second way is to measure their diameter. And a third way is to measure their circumferences. Now for gear ratio. If we compare the number of teeth like this, we get a ratio. In this case, it is either 1 to 2 or 2 to 1, depending on which one is the driver gear, which I will explain coming up. Let's compare the diameters now. We'll bring in a ruler for this. We see that the diameter of the larger gear is 4 centimeters, and the smaller one, going from 5 to 7, is 2 centimeters. Thus, the gear ratio between these two is 2 to 1. Circumference is easily calculated from the diameter, so I won't show it here, but the same ratio would be obtained. Now, the method of counting teeth is the simplest and by far the most common way of determining gear ratios. So we'll stick with counting teeth. When a gear is connected to a power source, like an electric motor, or a car engine, or even the muscle power of a human, it is called the driver gear. The other gear that is being driven is the driven gear. Another term is the follower, since it follows the driver. I believe follower may be the British term. Let's now apply the gear ratio concept to two different setups. Recall that gear ratio is the number of teeth of the driven over the number of teeth of the driver, as well as this version. Here we have an eight tooth gear and a 16 tooth gear. We attach a motor to the smaller gear, so it becomes the driver gear. The larger one is automatically the driven gear. The gear ratio is 16 over 8 or 2 to 1. This number is greater than 1 and so is considered to be a high gear ratio. Now let's observe the motion of these meshed gears. The red marks are the starting points. As the larger gear turns once, count how many turns the smaller gear makes. You saw that the smaller gear made two revolutions to the larger gear's one revolution. The larger gear took longer for one revolution, so we say its speed was less. Whenever the driven gear is larger than the driver, this will be true. The gear ratio 2 to 1 tells us that two turns of the driver will produce one turn of the driven. 
This situation is known as gearing down. Now the down refers not to the size of the gear but to the speed. So gearing down always produces less speed. On the other hand, it produces more force, and this will be dealt with later. Let's look at this 2 to 1 ratio again, because it can be looked at in two different ways, in terms of number of teeth or in terms of number of rotations. The first number refers to how many teeth the driven gear has compared to the driver, as shown in the above definition. So the driven has two times the number of teeth as the driver. But this ratio also tells us the relative number of rotations. The first number always refers to the driver rotations, and the second to the number of driven rotations. Thus the driver rotates two times more, or two times faster, than the driven. The right side here will deal with gearing up. I'll return after I show an example of gearing down. But first, to test your understanding, consider this gear train. First question, which one is the driver and which one is the driven? If you said you can't tell without more information, you are right, and here it is. Now two more questions before the gears turn. How many revolutions will the driver make for one revolution of the driven? And is this system gearing up or gearing down? Let's look at the rotations. Did you get these answers? The small gear is the driver because from the definition of gear ratio, we see that 32 in the numerator refers to the driven while 8 in the denominator refers to the driver. The driver made four revolutions, and this is gearing down because the large gear is moving slowly. Gears can be used in machines to increase force. This picture shows a small gear, that's kind of hidden under here, acting as the driver. The motor is the man turning a lever. The driven gear is very large. When a small gear drives a large gear, the large gear exerts a stronger force on the turning axle so it can lift heavy loads. This system is used to open the gates of a waterway lock that joins the Ottawa River to the Rideau Canal. The gates can be opened and closed just by human muscle apply to this gearing down system with a large gear ratio. Let's now return to the other side of this slide. Let's reverse the operation of each gear. So the larger one is the driver gear and the smaller one is the driven gear. The gear ratio is 1 to 4 and is a low gear ratio. Observe how many turns the small one makes while the larger gear turns once. You saw turn four times. The ratio one to four tells us that one revolution of the driver causes four revolutions of the driven. It goes faster. This is called gearing up, which again refers to speed. Gearing up produces more speed, but less force on the turning axle. Let's check this 1 to 4 ratio. The first number refers to driver rotations, and the second one to the driven rotations. Thus, the driver makes one rotation for four rotations of the driven. A low gear ratio is built for speed, as you saw. In terms of number of teeth, the first number always refers to the driven gear. Here the driven gear has one-fourth the number of teeth of the driver gear. Here is an example of gearing up. 
The egg beater shows the hand turning the larger gear with moderate force, while the smaller gear turns much faster, causing the blades to whir around at high speed. The blue arrow shows the large driver, and the red arrow shows the small driven gear. Here's a question about can openers. Are they gearing up or down? This picture shows the two gears not meshed, and this one shows them meshed. The left gear is the driver. What do you think? If you look closely at the teeth, don't they seem to be equally spaced in both gears? In fact, for this can opener, each gear has 12 teeth. So with a gear ratio of 1 to 1, it is neither gearing up nor down. The muscular force of most people's hand is enough to both puncture the can and turn the driver gear. Since the process takes only seconds, there is no need for speed, so a 1 to 1 gear ratio is suitable for most hand-driven can openers. Finally, let's look at gears and clocks. Here's a grandfather clock, and here is a part of the inside. The various gear trains drive the hands and chimes and moon phase dial. Here is a clock tower in a small Ontario town. Inside we see the gear train that controls the hands of the clock face. Finally, to end this video, let's do a calculation of the gear ratio for this gear train. Up to now we have dealt with only two gears. The way to do this is to get the ratios for one pair at a time and then multiply them together. For the first two, the blue gear is the driver and the brown one is the driven. So the ratio is just 10 over 8. The brown gear is now the driver for the green one. So that ratio is 12 over 10. And the green gear is now the driver for the dark blue one. Their ratio is 16 over 12. Now we simply multiply them together like this. Notice how the 10s and the 12s cancel out to give us 2 over 1, which can also be written as 2 to 1. When we refer to rotations, remember the first number is the driver and the second one is the driven. Thus, for every two turns of the driver, the driven makes one rotation as the animation shows. At some point in this description you may have wondered why do we have the two middle gears since combining just the blue driver and the dark blue driven also give the two to one ratio. You're quite right. No engineer would ever have more gears than necessary as the additional friction and space requirement would make for an inefficient gear train. The purpose here was just to show how to combine ratios as this will be significant in the video on compound gears. This ends the introduction to gears.